Now that, you've learned, now that you've learned a few of the key points about swing speed training, let's go over the basic speed training program. When I originally designed the basic swing speed training program, I wanted to create something that doesn't take up uh, too much time, uh, that's convenient, uh, that can be done at home. Now, you can certainly do it at the golf course if you want, but honestly, it's, uh, it's not necessary. All you need is just some space to swing a golf club. However, despite it being a bare bones type of program, it's still normal to expect to gain 12 to 16 miles an hour, 30 to 40 yards, in only four weeks because it incorporates some of the more important principles of swing speed training. We're going to be practicing swinging fast. Uh, we'll work with some sort of store-bought or homemade uh, type of training aid. And we'll also be strengthening up your downswing uh, through the use of resistance band isometrics. And we'll get into some more advanced training in the next section, but for now, uh, we've established enough of a knowledge base uh, to get you started on some basic training. So here's the basic routine to follow. First, make five, five, uh, five separate swings as fast as you can. Ideally, use your swing speed radar or another radar device uh, to record your fastest speed on uh, either your smartphone or in a small notebook or something similar. Second, make five uh, more swings with some sort of uh, resistance as fast as you can. This can be um, a swing fan, a speed whoosh, uh, or some other type of training aid, even if it's a homemade one. And again, note your fastest speed. Third, make three sets of five push-ups, each individually as fast as you can. Fourth, uh, perform eight to 10 second band isometrics with your right hand, left hand and both hands at the top of your backswing, halfway down, and an impact. Fifth, make five more uh, speed swings as fast as you can. Use your radar again and record your fastest speed. Sixth, make five more swings with your training aid and again, uh, record your speed, uh, or measure your speed and record it. Now during each speed training session, I want you to keep a few things in mind. Most people have a maximum speed and a playing speed. With swing speed training, we're working on training your body to raise its maximum speed. When you raise your maximum speed and then you back off to your playing speed, the new playing speed will actually be higher than it used to be. So for purposes of speed training, really push yourself to raise that max because uh, to, get, to get faster, you need to try to go faster. While it's important to push yourself to the max, don't do it at the expense of good fundamentals. Swing as fast as you can during the training, uh, but not at the expense of balance and staying under control. Hitting farther uh, is not gonna matter if you don't keep the ball on the golf course or in the grid. Swing speed training is meant to be a supplemental thing uh, to any other practice and play that you might do. When you're pushing yourself at max speed, um, don't worry so much about where the ball goes if you happen to be training while hitting balls. The purpose of this aspect of training uh, is just to train your body to go to new limits speed-wise. If you do your swing speed training at the driving range, you might finish off the training by hitting a few short pitch shots to help you get back down to your normal rhythm. Make sure to track some numbers during your session. You can use these numbers to know what you have to beat next time. Uh, plus, it's just nice to look back after a few weeks and to see your progress. Do this routine twice per week, for example, Monday and Thursday. On two other days, for example, on Tuesday and Friday, uh, take out your driver and radar and make 20 to 30 more uh, fast swings as fast as you can. Uh, make sure to take a few seconds rest between swings, um, and especially if you notice your speed dropping off. It's the combination of practicing your speed and making your downswing muscles stronger that can really give you the bump um, in speed and distance. If you like, you can also add in a minute or two of visualization when you first wake up in the morning, when you're in the shower, or when you go to bed. You can be creative about what you imagine, but uh, simply contemplating how fast, balanced, and controlled your body needs to move to achieve your target speed, uh, that'll work just fine. The best swing speed training results come from an individually customized program. Believe it or not, I've had some more dedicated members who I've worked with who've added 
20, 30, and even 40 miles an hour of additional swing speed. That means if you're willing to be patient and continue to work at it over several months, you can literally add 50 to 100 yards on your tee shots and go from average amateur power, even on a level of sub 200 yard drives, and be hitting as far as a tour professional in a relatively short amount of time. Now, some of my guys have even gone on to compete in long drive uh, in their respective age divisions. Unfortunately, since my time for working with people on an individual basis is limited, it's not feasible for me to give everyone a personally tailored training program. However, what I can do is to give you some advice on some main things to include in your training program. Here are some of those key points. <clears throat> Definitely incorporate practicing swinging fast and some sort of golf swing specific strength training, especially for your downswing. Up to a certain point, the more swing volume, the better. Um, in the basic program, we did 20 to 30 total uh, speed reps per session with your driver. Uh, when I was competing in long drive and got my swing speed radar up to 155 miles an hour, I was doing 95 speed reps in a session. As for strengthening up your golf swing, uh, the band isometrics from the basic program are a great way to start. Additionally, you can get into the gym and isolate and strengthen your golf swing muscles using free weights, cable weights, Nautilus machines, etc. While competing in long drive, I would start out in the gym with some isometrics or isokinetics for the body part I was about to work out. I would do the weight exercise, and then I'd follow it up with some drive speed reps with no weight as a way of telling my muscles that the additional strength I was getting was to be used specifically for speed in my golf swing. It makes a big difference to your training if you use a radar uh, because it gives you immediate speed fat, uh, feedback and keeps you training on the edge for each and every training swing. For consistency's sake, always use the same radar and be aware of what your radar is measuring uh, when comparing to other people. For example, like we were saying, both a sports sensor swing speed radar and a TrackMan have accurate Doppler radar, but they're measuring slightly different things. Thus, uh, the swing speed radar will we generally read anywhere between 5 and 12 percent faster, depending on the person. Again, for me, uh, that average is about 10 percent. Don't perform swing speed training at the sacrifice of good swing fundamentals. Uh, because for every inch that you miss the sweet spot on your driver, you lose approximately 20 yards of drives, uh, 20 yards on your drives. So focus on your training, uh, which means swing as fast as you can and definitely try to push yourself to new levels, but never at the expense of making a good swing. Cycle your workouts uh, in the gym and uh, for your speed training. Uh, for example, do upper body on one day and lower body on the other day. You should be able to get in and out of the gym inside 30 to 60 minutes for each workout depending on how much you do and how much rest you take between sets. As long as you repeat a body part uh, at least once per week, it's frequent enough to make gains each week. Here are a few common bodybuilding splits. For each gym exercise, contemplate the position of your body in the golf swing and isolate those movements. Mimic your golf swing as best as you can for each exercise. Uh, and only use the lifting range of motion used in your golf swing uh, to ingrain a point A to point B firing point for your muscles. For example, 
well, let's take a look at the lead legs quadricep muscle uh, in my golf swing and see what it does throughout my swing. As you can see, the quadriceps part of my leg is basically going the, uh, through the same motion as can be trained with a leg curl or a squat. However, note that the leg does not move through the whole range of its possible joint motion. Therefore, when you're in, uh, when you're in the gym, if you're going to do a squat, exercise those muscles accordingly to how you're going to use them in your golf swing. I call this type of squat a golf squat. And you could even do them one-legged if you like. Do all your weight exercises as explosively as you can, especially on the concentric or flexing part of the rep, uh, but stay in balance and under control. Now I know some trainers would have you move through the weight slowly throughout the entire movement to eliminate any momentum that you might have uh, that can make the rep easier. Uh, while there is merit to this, uh, lifting in an explosive or ballistic manner gets better, uh, gets better results uh, as far as swing speed training goes. In a game of golf, there are typically several minutes of rest between each shot. Uh, the golf swing is one repetition, rest, uh, one repetition, rest, etc. So I believe your weight training should be similar. Also make sure to do as much weight as you can safely control. In the gym, make sure to strengthen and speed up the parts of, uh, parts of your entire swing. In the basic program, we worked on strengthening your downswing because that's the most important part. Uh, remember that everyone, whether you're 65 year old uh, senior amateur or a world long drive championship, uh, world long drive champion, starts at zero miles an hour at the top of their backswing and gets to whatever their top speed is down towards impact. However, for maximum effect, it's important to train the entire swing motion. For example, aside from the downswing, it also makes sense to work out the part of the swing from impact to your finish. One can imagine that if a boxer were to terminate his punch at his target, the effect of the punch wouldn't be near uh, as damaging as if he were to accelerate through his target and terminate the punch at some point beyond the location of the original target. It's also good to work on speeding up your backswing muscles. Why? Uh, it's to take advantage of the natural action of the stretch reflex that's within all of us. Now, the stretch reflex is a muscle contraction in response to the stretching of that muscle. So if you flex your biceps muscle, it will bring your hand up towards you. This also lengthens or stretches the triceps muscle, which uh, primes the triceps to contract and thus stop your hand from going too far overextending itself. Overextending itself. Uh, stretch receptors are built into your body for your safety, uh, correcting posture, etc. Now the faster the stretch phase, the stronger the response of the shortened phase. Unknowingly, you may already be aware of the stretch reflex in other sports. Uh, notice when a basketball player or high jumper is about to jump, his or uh, her last step is typically a longer stretched one. Similarly, in baseball, you can see it when a batter pumps backwards before making a swing at the ball. In football, when a punter or a field goal kicker is about to kick a ball, there's a longer opposite direction stretch of the muscles before the kicker goes the other way. Whether these athletes know it or not, they're all taking advantage of the stretch reflex. In golf, training to increase the speed and strength of your backswing can make it easier to reverse direction and make a faster downswing because of the stretch reflex. In fact, when I'm doing more uh, advanced swing speed training with someone, this is one way in which the tempo timer on uh, the red sports sensor swing speed radar comes in handy. That is, uh, it can measure the time it takes to go from your initial takeaway back to impact.
Factor in rest and recovery. Overtraining is counterproductive and can lead to injury. Now, this is actually why the basic program only has you work out twice per week. As an example, normally a bodybuilder will take two days off before working out the same individual body part again. When I was training in long drive, I would go three days on and then two days off to mimic the three days in a row of competition that my body would have to withstand uh, and be able to perform, uh, but then to allow some recovery time before repeating the training cycle again. It really helps a lot of people to write down their workouts. This way, uh, you can more easily remember what weight you did uh, in the previous workout. It helps you to quickly identify if you're not making progress. It helps ensure that you're pushing yourself and improving in some way each workout, uh, whether it's speed, strength, balance, etc. And it enhances motivation and confidence to keep, uh, to keep going when you look back and you see your progress week to week and month to month. On occasion, I'll get someone that isn't experiencing the normal expected speed gains. In nearly every case, when I sat down and spoke with them in uh, person, or over the phone, or Skype, or email, these were the main problems. Let's face it, to get faster, you have to really try to push yourself to go faster. If you're just going through the swing motions and aren't really exerting yourself, it's difficult to get faster. Again, for that reason, I really recommend that you use the swing speed radar during your training. That way you can make sure that you're really trying to top your previous best each and every training swing. And you might even use uh, the radar like I was suggesting in the basic program with your training aid devices. Similar to what I just said about not pushing yourself to the max on your training swings, if you don't continue to add band resistance, uh, move up in weights, etc., to get stronger, how do you expect to get faster? So try to make improvements in every single workout, whether that's in the speed of your reps, quality of movement at the high speed, or amount of resistance bands, or amount of weights, etc. Okay, so those are the basics of swing speed training. Let's quickly review. One way to get more power and hit the ball farther is to increase your swing speed. There are three major components to increasing your swing speed. Those are practicing swinging fast, using training aids, and doing strength training. There are three major types of training aids that are useful for swing speed training. Wind resistance devices, uh, overload devices, and over speed devices. For strength training, uh, you can do that either using resistance bands or weight training. Additionally, extra stuff you can do includes things like improving your, over, uh, your overall health and fitness, uh, using sports supplements, uh, visualizing, having soft tissue work done on your body, etc. As a general guideline, many women and seniors have driver swing speeds between 60 and 90 miles an hour. Many amateur men are between 80 to 100 miles an hour. The senior tour averages around 106 miles an hour, and the PGA tour averages about 113 miles an hour. Top seniors in long drive can usually swing in the low 130s, and top open division long drivers are typically in the low to mid 140s. You get much better results on average when you train with a swing speed reader, so I highly recommend getting one. The basic speed training program takes about 10 to 15 minutes twice a week, and it incorporates principles that include practicing swinging fast, using some sort of tray, uh, store bot or homemade training aid, and working with resistance bands uh, to strengthen your downswing muscles. Uh, it's normal to expect 12 to 16 miles an hour increases in swing speed uh, within 30 days or so using the basic speed training program. For those that are more dedicated, there are a number of things to keep in mind when putting together a program for yourself. Of course, uh, it's important to include practicing swinging fast uh, and doing some sort of strength training that's very specific to the movements of your golf swing. Uh, make sure to train with a swing speed radar for feedback and swing as fast as you can control during your, uh, during your speed training. Uh, cycle your strength training workouts. Go with heavy weights and low reps. Uh, record your progress in a notebook or something similar. 
and try to improve in some facet each and every workout. You also want to make sure to incorporate enough rest and recovery time into your schedule. But done correctly, it's possible to pick up 20, 30, or even 40 miles an hour of additional swing speed over a several month period. If you're not making the gains that you expect, normally uh, people are either not using a swing speed radar to ensure they're pushing themselves to get faster, or they aren't adding additional band or uh, weight resistance as they're able to from week to week uh, and month to month. As long as you're practicing your speed and uh, continuing to make your golf swing stronger, the speeds should continue to go up and up.